Let's work now on an example in AC steady state, a small one, if I may. Reference node, node 1, node 2. All the phasors are given in rectangular form out of convenience, but you know you could have them normally. You do in polar form, and all the impedances are written in rectangular form. 3 plus J10, negative J7, 7, 2 minus J3. Here you have a red herring. This 7 ohm resistor in series with this current source, you know that that is not going to be part of the KCL equations. You know that you should not include this in your matrix. Anyway, let's write uh, that matrix, shall we? KCL1. Being our first exercise, I'm going to write that completely. KCL1 and KCL2. But I will write that anyway in matrix 4. The coefficient for V1 is going to be 1 over 2 negative 3 plus 1 over 310. The sum of the conductances connected to node 1. And what about this other term is going to be negative and it's going to be the conductance between node 1 and node 2 will be 1 divided by 310. The symmetry forces this value to be repeated down here. We've seen that. And the host coefficient for the equation 2 will be all the conductances connected to node 2 do not fall in the trap of including 1 over 7, right? This is to be treated as a current source only branch. And that would be 1 over 310. That 310 goes around, eh? It's in every term, plus 1 over 0, negative 7. That is your matrix of coefficient. We multiply that times V1 and V2, the unknowns, the voltages of those two nodes with respect to the reference, and equate that to the total current provided by the uh, sources to those nodes would be 27 minus 33 for this one. 2, 7, minus 3, 3. And for the second one will be 3, 3, plus 5. You say, what? 3, 3, plus 5. Indeed, you don't need to write 5, comma, 0. It's a real number anyway. Now you enter them in the calculator and solve it. 